Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about a standard wedlock versus an ACT ice lock. So in the embedded computing industry, a lot of customers are using these um, web slots or card retainers to hold their cards into the chassis. So basically customers will have a card frame which they mount their electronics to and that will slide into a chassis and then use these wedge locks to mechanically attach the card frame to the chassis. The reason why customers like this is because they want to service these cards, they want to put them in and out and that mechanical joint um, allows you to do that. So basically you're just tightening a screw to increase force outward and that allows it to hold in place and then when you want to service the card you untighten the screw, slide it out, service your card and slide it back in. So it makes it a really nice mechanical joint. Um, the challenge for the traditional, or the traditional wedge lock is the thermal performance. So today we're going to be looking at the thermal resistance network between a traditional wedge lock and an ACT ice lock. Um, so just to give you some form of functionality, as I mentioned, you tighten the screw on one end, it presses the wedges together, and then that creates an outward force. So it presses the wedges together and creates um, movement upward and downward. So what I'm going to do is kind of draw this cross section that you see right here in both the traditional wedge lock and the ACT ice lock. So looking at the wedge lock first, what happens with the wedge lock is you tighten the screw and it creates a up and down force. So that allows it to mechanically attach to the chassis. Um, what happens thermally is you create two distinct thermal paths. So if your heat's input on your card, it travels through your card, and then the wedge lock presses down to allow that heat to go straight from the card frame to the chassis. And then the second thermal path is actually going through the wedge lock and into the chassis on the upward side and um, it creates two very distinct and very different uh, thermal resistance networks. So the two networks that you'll see, this is your card frame temperature. The first one going down is basically a very straightforward path. You have one thermal resistance, which is basically the metal to metal interface between your card frame and your chassis. In the upward direction, you're actually going to have several uh, thermal resistances. So you're going to have resistance between uh, metal to metal between the card frame and the wedge lock. Um, you're also going to have conduction through the wedge, another metal to metal interface into the second wedge, and then a metal to metal interface into the chassis. So it actually creates five different resistances. And as you can see, you have one really good thermal path and one really poor thermal path. So what ends up happening is about 70 to 80% of your heat wants to go through the really good thermal path and only about 20 to 30% goes through the bad thermal path. So that creates a significant conduction gradient um, through that upward path. Now if you go to the ice lock, what ACT designed is a wedge lock that uses geometry to expand in all directions. So the ice lock is not only expanding up and down, but it's also expanding left and right. And so it creates an additional contact point um, at the card frame and an additional contact point of the chassis. So as you can imagine, it creates additional surface area, but also an additional thermal path. So again, heat into your card, you're going to conduct through your card, and in this case, you're going to have one thermal path go straight into one wedge and out um, into the chassis. You're going to have your same thermal path as you did in the wedge lock going through the card frame down to the chassis. And then you're going to have another thermal path going through a single wedge out the sidewall of the chassis. So if we map that from a thermal resistance network point of view, Because you're only going through one wedge in each scenario, it actually limits a metal-to-metal -metal interface as well as a um, conduction path. So what that would look like is you would have three thermal paths, two identical through a single wedge and into the chassis, 
and then one is your strong thermal path straight from the car to the chassis. So in this case, you have a resistance metal to metal into the ice lock, a conduction through uh, the single wedge of the ice lock, and then a metal metal interface at the chassis. Um, but in general, you have three paths, so additional surface area, additional contact points, and you have a slightly less torturous path in paths one and two in this case, and then a very similar path as you would in the wedge lock for the optimal thermal path. So what ends up happening here is you get about 40% that wants to go through um, the optimal thermal path and about 30% that wants to go through each additional path. So what ends up happening is because you have um, more power going through each path, you end up lowering your overall temperature gradient. So all in all, you get about 33% improvement going from a standard wedge lock to an ice lock. And in terms of power, if you were putting 100 watts into a card, that results in up to a five degree temperature difference. So if you're really tight on, if you're putting a lot of power into your cards and really tight on uh, thermal performance, an ice lock is a really easy way to improve your thermal performance without redesigning your system. So I hope that helps. If you have any further questions, there's a lot of information on our website and feel free to call ACT. Thank you.